Hi everyone, how are you doing? I hope you are doing well. Welcome to my very late night recording. <laughs> By the time you get this, it'll be in the morning or maybe, you know, if you're in America, it'll be like, you know, early morning. If you're in Europe, it would be probably afternoon. But anyways, welcome to Facts and Two Cents. This is Petal. Um, as you know, we are a channel that supports the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Harry, Meghan, Archie, Baby Lily, Mama Doria, Pula Guy, the Chickens. All of us here at Sussex Squad. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you guys had a great weekend, a great Sunday. Again, I'm recording this very late Sunday night. Um, I will, when I post it, I will not be in the chat. I'll just leave the chat open because I will be teaching at that time. So um, have a great time and I will catch up with you in the comments. But anyway, what is going on in the phase with, you know, in the royal scheme of things and all of the things around it? Well, our faves are fine. As far as I know, they're fine in California. We have, we don't know, um, you know, what they're doing because they're quiet. So we like that. We love them to stay quiet under a tree, just doing whatever it is they're doing. We just love that for them. So, you know, just spend summer there with your babies, just hanging out and doing what you wonderful things that you guys are, you know, I assume you're doing. So I love that for them. I love their quiet. I love the peaceful time. I love the fact that they don't have to answer anything. They're just doing their work. As we saw, they were working with um, uh, the organization, um, really promoting fatherhood and, um, you know, fathers having a more uh, parental role with the kids' lives. And I know Harry is so hands-on and he is such a great dad and really just hands-on with his kids. So it was really wonderful to see him do that and uh, really promote, um, you know, getting rid of the stigma about, you know, stay-at-home dads and all of those things. And so it's really great because I know he was, you know, last year promoting um, paid leave for all and really um, about dads also to getting um, leave when, for example, they just have a new baby, you know, and his wife has a new baby. And so it's really wonderful to see what they're doing. And yeah, so you all just stay under your tree, relax, do whatever you need to do and let the crazy ones do crazy stuff. You have to pay no mind to it. <laughs> And I hope us in the squad just sort of like, you know what? We are beyond that nonsense. So there you go. And so, but some on Shutter Island, obviously I'm not. I feel like just about every week Shutter Island has like a docu see documentary or some kind of special programming about the Sussexes. As we know, Harry and Meghan pay their bills. If they don't have content about Harry and Meghan, no matter how many times they've repeated the same thing, no matter how many times the same people are saying the same thing over and over and over again, and you know, a myriad of different ways, but really it's the same thing, you know, they still keep doing it. And it's just like, so it's so funny. Um, I think it was Joseph Fenn, I think that's her name on Twitter posted this and um, she sort of, um, her account was locked by the time I was trying to get her name. So it's like, I think it was Josephine where I saw this. So she had posted this little clip from Rupert Murdoch's The Times. And when The Times are calling you out, you know, about something about the Sussexes, you know, <laughs> you've overdone it a little bit. You know what I mean? And so it just, <laughs> I saw this and I had to laugh and I was just like, yep. Harry and Meghan pay their bills. So apparently uh, Channel 5 is having yet another special or document, whatever it is they're having about Meghan. Well, this time about Meghan. And apparently, and this was actually posted yesterday about this show. It was supposed to be, I guess, today. Yep. So today um, at 9.15 p.m. UK time, there's supposedly this show on Channel 5, Meghan, famous but friendless, or Megan, famous but friendless? Another collective of archive clips and talking head punditry in search of the elusive question, what will the Duchess of Sussex do next? <laughs> Has she burned her bridges with the royal family? Has her conduct led her to wariness from the public on both sides of the Atlantic? 
And what does the recent loss of $20 million de deal with the streaming giant Netflix mean for her and the, Duch and the Duke of Sussex? Whom can we rely on now? Whom can they rely on now? The obvious answer is that nobody knows. <laughs> but they won't stop the chit chat from the usual. That won't stop the chit chat from the usual suspects. <laughs> I mean, this is so ridiculous. It is not even funny. It is just like I mean, it's ridiculous and absolutely. Well, actually, it is kind of funny <laughs> to come to think of it. It is kind of funny, but it's just like, how many times are they going to do this? How many times are they going to ask these stupid questions? I mean, famous but friendless. I mean, really? I think only on Shutter Island you can get away with this this level of stupidity because I don't think any other country would allow this nonsense in their press. But here we are, you know? And again, if, the, if a Rupert Murdoch paper is calling you out for just the ridiculousness of this, you know you've gone too far, you know? Has she burned bridges with her, or again, with the stupid bridges? Has her conduct, I mean, it's so funny when they talk about conduct. It's kind of like, I'm like, it's like you're training an animal or something. It's just like their conduct. I mean, it's just like, seriously? Or their behavior. And it's just like, <laughs> what do you not think this is? You know, it's just it's really, really funny. And again, with this, with the uh, $20 million deal, which again, for like the 50 million time, nobody knows the, the dollar amount of Harry and Meghan's deal with, with, with Netflix. I'm sorry, yeah, with Netflix. And not with Netflix, with Spotify. No one knows what the deal is, but this is the press is coming up with the 20 million, I mean, and that's the thing, it's very Trumpian what they do. It's like they repeat something over and over and over and over and over until it becomes fact to them and their crazy followers because nobody in their right mind and nobody with any kind of common sense, knowing that Harry and Meghan have never revealed that, nor has Spotify or, and even Netflix, their deal with Netflix, no, neither party has revealed the amount. But yet the press is throwing around this these numbers as if, you know, it's true, which most likely is a lie, you know, but it's just, it's really funny. And, you know, again, Channel 5 with their, I guess, special. But, you know, it's so funny. You look at that and then you come into the real world, you know, it's like, there's a real world out there. <laughs> Has Megan burned her bridges? Has the public grown tired of her? And meanwhile, in the real world, Megan's old show Suits is at number three on Netflix. <laughs> You know, I, yeah, I guess it answers their question, right? If only they were looking for answers. You know, if only they were looking, you know, in the real world for answers. But again, this is the UK, so we know they're not looking in the real world for answers, you know. But again, this is an old show for Megan, and here she is there with Mike. And, uh, you know, their show is at number three on Netflix. And of obviously, you know, we just did, um, I think it was the last episode where Suits, uh, you know, you know, the streaming platforms that it's been on, Peacock, uh, Amazon, and, and, and now uh, Peacock USA, I think it's USA or Amazon, one of them, and Netflix, they have, you know, garnered 2.3 billion watch minutes. And so it is amazing number one in on Nielsen's ratings chart. And so it's amazing the thing. And again, this has been out since June. And here we are, you know, almost the end of July and it's still in the top five. You know, there was a point where three of their uh, seasons were in the top 10. It is amazing, you know, and further still in the real world. <laughs> In the real world of how people feel about Megan and Suits, you know, these are, I mean, these are, it's, it's endless. These are just the first ones I, you know, I was just like, okay, let me find some of these and bring it in. And uh, so these were some of the first ones I find, but there is like endless chatter about Megan, 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 Megan and Suits. And most of the guys are like, oh my gosh, Megan Marco, you know, um, uh, let me move my banner so that I can read the whole thing. But um, while I move it, um, you know, if you're new here and you have not subscribed to us, 
go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Help us build the channel, uh, build our platform, Podger. Um, like and share the video, please. Help us, you know, get the word out. And if you're able, join our Two Cents group where you support the channel on a monthly basis. So I'm just going to move my banner and then move our little brand over there. And so bring them back at the end. Hopefully I remember. Sometimes I forget. But anyways, we have video about suits right now. And so, yes. So in the real world, <laughs> that is obviously not Shutter Island, in the real world, these are some of the comments about Megan and Suit. I started watching Suits for the first time, and now I understand why Harry risked it all for Meghan Markle. <laughs> Variety. Nielsen streaming top 10. Uh, Suits lead with 2 billion minutes uh, minutes watched after Netflix debut. Opera Cake Lady. I am, in I am deep into binge watching Suits. The whole cast is great, including Meghan Markle. I kind of wish you'd try and get some roles, you know? I mean, they live in California. She enjoy acting. Why not? Is it the issue of reputation? Because obviously not the worst thing she could do. So if somebody's josing for Megan to go back to acting. Um, Kiku Cameron, I'm watching Suits for the first time. I started season two and I'm emotionally invested in Mike and Rachel. Rachel is Megan's character. <laughs> Tony, POV me watching Suits for the first time, realizing that Meghan Markle was an actress before she married into the royal family. <laughs> and he put this um, sort of this gif with him like, whoa, you know, <laughs> uh, being a bit startled. Leash Luger, so Netflix shamelessly promoted Suits every day until everyone I know started watching it. Crazy. It's eight seasons and I never heard of it. Surprisingly, it got a, it's got it got a great plot and I got some new appreciation for the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle. Never knew she was an actress. <laughs> Salt and Pepper Savage. Just realized that Meghan Markle played in Suits. Harry, I understand. <laughs> Larry, my mom's watching Suits right now and all I can say is, Shout out Meghan Markle. <laughs> Brent, I'm addicted to watching Suits. And I don't know if it's because I really love the story or if it's just Meghan Markle. <laughs> Coops, Meghan Markle in Suits is the hottest person this world has ever seen. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. I mean... <laughs> Like, I'm only doing one page of this. You know, it's just very funny. People discovering her and discovering suits. And, you know, the guys especially are like, Megan Parker, woo. <laughs> now I understand, Harry. Now I get it. <laughs> so they're all like, I'm, they have all these gifs of Megan, you know. And it's just very funny. But it's, you know, again, in the real world, <laughs> obviously, a lot of people are in the discovery phase of whoa, Megan. <laughs> and you, you know, I could just imagine Harry like uh Leah, she's a married woman, that's my wife, you know. It's just very, very funny. I wonder how they are, you know, responding to this, you know, suits the resurgence, and you know, it's just a whole new audience and, and just the popularity of the show. And, you know, not just Megan, but there's the writing, the story. People are really addicted to the show. One person wrote that, you know, she started watching Suits and her life has not been the same. She's basically binge watching. <laughs> you know, it is really funny, but it's just, you know, again, in the real world. This is what is going on. Maybe those on Shutter Island would love to come into the real world every now and then. Just saying. But anyways, that's all what our faves are doing. And it is a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. And um, what else is happening? Oh, let's go over the Shutter Island for a second. <laughs> and Shutter Island being Shutter Island, it just, you know, it's what it is. It's so funny. I'm not here for Graham Smith, who is um, sort of like the head or leader or CEO or whatever of uh, the Republic Group. And I've gotten on their case quite a few times, you know, especially when he was going after um, Harry and Meghan. But, you know, as, um, what's her name? 
oh my goodness, I can't remember his name, that ran for governor of uh, Georgia, all of a sudden, Stacey Abrams, oh my goodness, I forgot Stacey Abrams' name, uh, Stacey Abrams so uh, said, she's like, even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> So this is my broken clock for Graham Smith, who I'm not here for, but reading this article, I was like, you know what? Kudos, Graham Smith. You are the broken clock. That's right. To at least once today, you know, or actually yesterday when he, this article came out. So he wrote this article for The Guardian. It says, from Republic CEO Graham Smith on the shameful dishonesty and money grabbing of our head of state. He's not playing when it comes to Charles and his grifting ways. The, um, so the article says, um, what's behind Charles's bumper pay rise? Greed, lies, and a ton of public, you know, basically manipulating the public. Um, the crown estate no more belongs to the monarch than 10 does to Rishi Suna. So why such a huge handout? Ask Graham Smith, CEO of Republic. And so what's going on here with Charles? I mean, we know Charles is grifting and the royal family are just basically grifters. But what happened is um, the press, the royal family and the government and the press basically put out this report or this news uh, press release basically to try one to confuse the public and flat out lie to them about the royal family um their sovereign grant which is the money that they get from you know a percentage of the crown estate um that that's gonna go down for 2025 and you know the press was touting it i'm telling you that's why the royal family you know cling to the tabloids and because you know the tabloids is going to lie and hide their mess and not just the tabloids. You know, we'd say this a lot about the tabloids, but you see the same thing with the, with the mainstream press, or so-called mainstream press of the royal family. It is a protection racket. You're in bed with them and they'll protect you. You're not in bed with them. They will, you know, look at how they treat Harry and Meghan. You know, it's like a total protection racket or else they would be calling this mess out, you know, thank you, Guardian. I mean, Guardian could be a mess sometimes, but at least, again, broken clock. Um, you know, so they talked about how the royal family, you know, they're, especially the finance, is this secret thing. And the reason it's secret is because it's deceptive, they're, it's lying, it's, you know, cooking the books in a lot of ways and, and to bamboozle the public into believing one thing when something is complete, you know, the opposite is complete, is the truth. And they have the government, you know, backing it and they have the press all hiding all of that stuff. I mean, you know, we saw, and I didn't even go into it, the last suffering grant report where the, the royal family's take from the suffering grant was 86 um, million pounds. They... Oh, they overspent that and they spent, I think it was at what, 102 million pounds. Now you tell me this, King Charles has been touting this, you know, um, you know, reducing the size of the monarchy and downsizing the monarchy. And they have only like these seven or eight people there. I mean, they don't have the queen to pay for. They don't have Prince, um, Prince Philip to pay, um, Prince Philip to pay for. They don't have Prince Andrew to pay for. They definitely don't have the Sussexes. So then tell me how it, on earth with all these fewer people, did you overspend and spend over like 102 million pounds? How did that happen? You know? And so when you think, you know, when they have been touting and touting this, you know, I don't even remember the phrase they call it, but just this reduced number of people in the monarchy, you know, this is the thing. They Charles wanted this oh, slim down monarchy. Well, the fact of the matter is, slim down doesn't mean cutting their sovereign ground, what they get from the stuff. It doesn't cut, that, that's not what that means. It means, means that Charles get more to keep more money for himself instead of having to pay for these other royals. He get to keep more of it. They get to hold on to more of that money and use it for whatever reason, you know, for his uh, personal selfish gains and a lot of those things, you know. And so people, you know, the press have been touting that, oh, it's a slim down monarchy. Well, then how did the slim down monarchy spend 102 million pounds, which is way over the 86 million, which was their budget and which they were allotted? 
So that clearly doesn't mean that more money is going to taxpayers, you know, um, pockets. That's going to the royal family. And so they put out this report that, you know, there's gonna be, it's going to go down. Um, and then, you know, Graham Smith picked it up and he's like, this is a whole lie. This is a lie. This is a lie to confuse the, the public. It's a lie so they can hide what they actually do. For example, they claim, oh, it's 86 million pounds. That does not include security. And according to Graham Smith, that he's always put this out, is more like closer to 350 million pounds with all the security. Security is not included in that 86 million pounds that they were allotted, which obviously they went over. And it's just all of this stuff to hide what they do. And the British people are saying nothing. They are not protesting nothing other than, you know, the few people with the not my king. Not many people in the UK protest this mess. But so this is a little, these are a couple of clips from um, Graham's article. It says, to the list of charges, we can also add breathtaking dishonesty, um, which is, you know, counting down all the ways that, the, you know, the royal family did by hiding money, all the things that they've been doing, you know, and um, the secrecy allowing them to just basically grift and um, so this is, again, this is a couple of clips from the article. It says, to, to list the charges, we can also add breathtaking dishonesty. In collusion with the palace, the government announced on Thursday that they would be in charge, that there would be a change in the calculation for determining the size of the sovereign grant, the official funding for the royal household. In a bit of a spin that put Malcolm Tucker to shame, it issued a statement that gave a very strong impression that the grant itself would be cut, while the truth is that it will probably go up by 45% or nearly 40 million pounds in 2025. It said that the sovereign grant would be 12% of the crown as the crown's estate net profit next year, down by 25%. And and that as a result, the royal household budget will be 24 million pounds lower next year and 130 million lower in both 2025 and 2026. That if the rate remains, then if the rate remains at 20, I'm sorry, then then if the rate, let me re, let me just read that again. I just confused myself. It said the sovereign grant would be 12% of the crown estate net profit next year, down by 25%. And that as a result, and that as a result, the royal household budget will be 24 um, million pounds lower next year and 130 million lower in both 2025 and 2026. That then if the rate remained at 25%. That suggested cut, which was nothing, that suggested cut, which was nothing of the sort, became the initial headline of the story. Further down the statement, the government explained that the total sovereign grant for 2024-2025 will remain flat 86.3 million pounds. No cut at all. Nowhere in the government statement did it explain that, in fact, Set out set at the equivalent 12% of the crown estate profit, the grant will jump from 86 million pounds next year to 126 million pounds in 2026. Why? Because um the sub the the um the crown estate their in their profits every year it keep increasing. So even if it stays at to that 12%, it will increase. So even if, you know, again, even if it stays at 12%, because the, the, in, the intake for the suffering and the crown estate increases, 12% now is would be very different from 12% in 2026. By 2026, again, because every year, they, it, you know, they, they, the income of the crown estate keeps going up, 12% will net them a lot more money. Even if the even if the percentage stay the same, they're going to get a lot bigger cut from the crown estate. And so Graham is estimating by 2026, instead of it being 86 million pounds, it's going to go up to 126 million pounds. Meanwhile, the press and the government 
trying to bamboozle the public claiming that oh they um they are going to get a you know they're going to basically get a pay cut and it's just like so graham is like that is a lie that is a blatant lie you know and so if you don't go in and read the actual statement, you don't know that they've lied to you. And so um, Guardian put out a little bit of a graph, and this is what it says. Like right now, twenty uh, from 2023, 2022, straight up until, you know, we are 2022, 2023, it's, it's going to stay 86.3 million straight to 2025. And at 2025, to, I'm sorry, at 2026, 2027, um, um, 2026 is going to jump from 86 to 20, uh, 24.4, uh, um, 20, 124.8 million pounds. And then 2026, 27 is going to jump to 126 million pounds. That's what they're going to be getting. Again, this is for a monarchy that claim they are slimming down. And again, people are like, oh, no, 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 they are slimming down, which means, you know, it's less money that taxpayers are going to have to give them. And it's like, no, <laughs> it means they get to keep more money. They get, the Charles get to have more money. He's not paying out, you know, Harry and Meghan, he's not paying, um, you know, some of them you know, elderly and retired. He's not paying for the Queen anymore. They're not paying for Andrew. They're not paying for Phil. None of that. So Charles gets to get all of this money, apart from the Duchy of Cornwall, Prince William getting the Duchy. I mean, it's just, and you know, well, Charles getting the Duchy of Lancaster, William the Duchy of Cornwall, and all of this money. And apparently with the Duchies, they have raised the rent on people. So they have gotten they basically got a windfall this year where the duchy had the income of the duchy was a way be, be you know f way more than we thought originally because why even in the cost of living crisis king charles raised people's rents and they're like oh no 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 it's because we have you know we have maintenance stuff to fix things and all of that stuff so they raise nonsense this is a cost of living crisis they raised the rents I mean, <laughs> it is so disgusting with these people. And yet we have the tabloid press and some in the, their so-called uh, legit press who are touting that, oh, uh, you know, the royal family, they're basically getting a pay cut. And it's just like, no, they're not. No, they're not. It's actually going to be going up, you know unbelievable well you know i shouldn't say unbelievable i mean if you've been a squad and you've been following the royal grifting for so long they've been doing this mess and just bamboo bamboozling the public and what do they do when they drop this sort of thing this is this is how you know how they try to hide things is when they drop this they know that this is going to come out right so what do they do they drop it right when it's prince george's birthday so they make George the big, you know, all about George's birthday. And I don't know, maybe they wrote articles. I don't know. I haven't paid attention, but I did see the picture in the front page. So they drop this news right when it's George's birthday, because why they know the majority of people would not read this. The majority of people would read it. Why? Because they'd be distracted by, oh, he's so cute. Now he's 10. He's all grown up. Nobody's going to read this. And so they bury these stories behind picture of you know using the kid to hide negative stories again this is how the royal family work and so uh, the whole time people aren't reporting this they're all talking about king prince george you know who looked the same as he's looked all the other times and i don't know what's exciting about that photo but you know british people love it and so they bury these stories and they could be like oh but we reported yes you dropped it when you know at a time when you know people would be distracted with something else, and so they wouldn't focus on this. And then by tomorrow, it's you know that's yesterday's news. <laughs> Nobody's focused on yesterday's news. They've moved on, you know. So this is how the royal family once again, uh, bamboozle their public, lie to their public, mislead their public with the help of the British press and the British government. It is um it is <laughs> unbelievable. 
Anyways, moving on. What else is happening? Well, tomorrow is going to be a doozy. Tomorrow is going to be a doozy. Um, but before we get to tomorrow, this is what's been happening. We talked a little bit about um, some of in yesterday's or the day before's episode of some of the threats that's been happening um, to the team at Byline Times since they started reporting about Dan Rutan and his, you know, his alias of, of Martin Brannigan, um, Brannigan, Brannan, um, what am I saying, Brannigan, Martin Branning and his bullying behavior. And so ever since that has been um, going on, um, GB, um, at Byline Times have been, you know, they've been hacked or somebody at least tried to hack them. You know, they've someone is, you know, as we mentioned the last episode, someone smeared blood in um, one of their cars. Um, people are now, you know, calling with, you know, really bad, you know, dangerous, um, you know, messages to them. And so they are under fire because, you know, they are going against the establishment. Again, the British royal, the British press is a protection racket. Uh, Hugh Grant said that about them. It's like literally a protection racket. That, you know, that's the only thing that explains the British press. I mean, their so-called legit press not picking up any of this story. They have been silent. It has been a blackout from this story. They only mentioned it a couple of times when they, you know, Dan Wooten said something. So they, they mentioned it from his angle. They've never talked about the actual charges against and the actual accusations against Dan Wooten. And it is just incredible. And, you know, we could think like, oh, okay, the tabloids. But no, their mainstream press has been completely silent. It is like, I'm telling you, these people worship at the feet of Rupert Murdoch. They worship at his feet. And it's just, it's unbelievable. And also, too, one could only imagine what Brett Martin Brannan has on some of them. Why they're silent, you know. But one of the things that happened is, um, this is Peter Jukes here. Peter Jukes um, is the found one of the founders and, um, you know, leaders over at byline times who have been putting out these expose um you know on dan wooten well peter jukes and his team obviously as we said they you know they someone tried to hack their phone um and in all of that stuff and um and so uh the only paper and it's not even the paper is an online outlet the only outlet that has picked up all of the, um, you know, all of the bullying and stuff that's that they are sending the t they're sending the team at Byline Times. The only outlet that's picked it up is Yahoo News. Everyone else has been silent. I mean, Byline Times have been tweeting all day yesterday about the attempted hacking, about the blood, about the um, really abusive emails and dangerous emails and all of that stuff. They've been tweeting that out since yesterday. The only outlet picked that up is, is Yahoo News. And so um, the, uh, Peter Jukes, um, so this is what, the, what uh, Yahoo News said about this. It says, Peter Jukes, co-founder and executive editor at Byline Times, says, uh, says, ins says the incident came after one of his reporters was targeted with phishing with a, by a phishing email earlier this week, which may have given away their address. I was followed, I'm sorry, it was followed by an abusive email sent to the newsroom on Saturday night with the subject over Dan Wooten reading, see you, uh, see you at the office and blood will flow. That's what the email said. See you at the office and blood will flow. On Saturday afternoon, Jukes returned a missed call and was told, are you Peter? You're going to regret this. Juke said that while receiving threats is dark and disturbing, his reporters are not deterred, are not deterred, adding, it doesn't stop us. We double our efforts not to be coward or intimidated. Yahoo's, uh, Yahoo News has seen an image of the suspected blood discovered under reporters' windshield on Friday morning but has chosen not to publish it for safety reasons. 
And again, Peter Duke says all of this stuff, all the things that's been happening to them and people are doing to them has been reported to the police. So the police is filed with the Metropolitan Police. Responding to the allegations against him, uh, against him directly on his show, the New Zealander, Dan Wooten, said that he is a victim of a witch hunt by a nefarious players claiming dark forces are attempted to bring down GB News. Peter Jukes, to which Peter Jukes responded, this is very Trumpian tactic. Trump has alleged to have broke, broken various U.S. laws, and rather than addressing the issues of fact, he said it is a conspiracy and a witch hunt, said Jukes. Exactly the same language is used by Wooten. You attack the motive. I understand why he's doing that on a personal level, but it is not very convincing on an evidential level. So Dan Wooten is basically employing what Trump did. You know, he has all, he's broken so many laws, but he's instead of addressing those things, you know, he does the, you know, it's a, it's a conspiracy. It's a witch hunt. It's all of those things instead of addressing the actual charges. And again, um, Peter Jukes and, and, and the Byline Times team said they have sent over 50 questions to Dan Wooten and his team. And those 50 questions, they have not and they have not answered it. And they have not denied that he is not red and they have not denied that he has bullied staff at the sun. None of those things have they denied. But Dan Wooten is on GB News claiming that, oh, it's a witch hunt and it's various players and dark forces are attempted to bring GB News down again. GB News, when uh, Byline Times started um, investigating this three years ago, Byline, um, GB News was not in existence. There was no GB News three years ago. And so this notion that they are attempted to bring down GB News is false. It is absolutely false. And so, yeah, so it's a good thing that, you know, Peter, Jukes, and his team, they're like not going to be deterred at all. They are pushing through and it's great that they've been online and they are pushing back and, and you know, and stuff. And also um, they are, their fundraiser, actually, they have a way over now, their fundraiser that really supports the journalists who have been working on this for three years. And so, so there's that. You know, Dan Wooten is also doing his um, uh, his fundraiser. It's just like, I cannot believe people are actually donating to this guy. This guy is a, you know, apparently a millionaire and he is begging his supporters and his uh, viewers for money. But, you know, unbelievable. I keep saying unbelievable, but yeah, it's, it's believable. This is who they are, you know, but Again, it's really great that Byline Times is not backing down. And so much so that the, the editor at Byline Times, she actually made a fun and she made, um, it's so funny, we all were just cracking up when she wrote this. She says, Dan appears confused. I am the editor of Byline Times. It's hard deep, not hard left. <laughs> Because Dan claimed that Byline Times is this hard left um, blog that is attacking him. And it's like, Byline Times is not hard. You know, they're not hard left anything. They're right there in the middle. But they, they call out, you know, right and left wing. They just literally report the news. They report the facts. And that's what they're about. You know, but Dan trying to, you know, stir up the right wing and stir up right wing hate, you know, basically branding by basically branding byline times this hard left group and so hard uh, you know hard left so hard deep Matharo, who is the editor she posted this and i was i i you know i got the connection it was just funny how she wrote it. it's like dan appears confused i'm the editor of byline times it's hard deep not hard left <laughs> And um, Hardeep, you know, in another one of her posts, she said, um, well, this was a couple of days ago. And so today she posted this. She says, on behalf of Byline Times, thank you to everyone who has offered their support in the face of threats and intimidation over the past few days. We carry on. Tomorrow we will be publishing the next part of our investigative series. Who is Martin Branning? And what did he do? And to which I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness.
goodness, we need to get our popcorn and everything, you know, sweets and snacks and everything, because this is going to be fire, you know. So apparently tomorrow afternoon or t early tomorrow evening, they're going to be there's going to be a, a bunch of very nervous people. And all those people that um, were in contact with Martin Brannan, a.k.a. Dan Wooten, and have, you know, done anything with Martin Brannan, you know, those, whatever it is they're supposed to have done, you know, they are all probably shaking in their boots. Because who knows what, you know, I mean, Byline Times have been good in, in, in not revealing people's identity because, you know, some people are mentally just messed up because of what Dan Wooten did to them. And so who knows, will they be exposing anyone? Um, you know, maybe not um, for the same reason. But it, I'm, I'm telling you, I cannot imagine what he has. He's been doing this for 10 years. So I can only imagine what he has on people, you know, so. So tomorrow, tomorrow, you know, and Peter Juice went back to talking about, you know, what it's like to have get the threatening phone calls, etc. And um, uh, yesterday he had tweeted blood smear on, on journalist window screen, a hack attempt to call um, a call out email or for witnesses. And now this and um, and the, this he's referring to is uh, the, his subtweet. He says, um, now a threatening phone call, number stored, man with a northern accent. Are you Peter? Are you, uh, you're you going to regret now. Thank you very much. And again, Peter said all of these things are with the police. They reported all of them. And uh, so Peter, Peter, you know, people have been very concerned about their safety, especially that they, I think the address was uh, compromised. And so uh, so people have been, not only that, they've been, you know, um, I guess we, I should say, been, um, you know, supporting his fundraiser. People have been subscribing to Byline Times. Again, the paper, is, uh, the, the, the news outlet is literally all crowdfunded. It's all people donating. They don't have investors at Byline Times. It's just totally um, people supporting them. Um, that's how they're able to do what they are doing. And so uh, Peter Jinks also said, thanks for all the messages and concern. Don't worry about me. Happy to draw the flag away from more vulnerable people. And yes, of course, every incident reported, logged and connected to the and connected by the police. It's classic harassment. And again, you know, Dan Wooten and his Elks, whoever it is that are making those phone calls, um, you know, all of it is now with the police. And the Stop Funding Hate joined in. Um, and the Stop Funding Hate joined in on it uh, today. It's like they tweeted, you know, we uh, subtweeting um, or quote tweeting, I should say, uh, byline times with you know Dan Wooten talking about nefarious character and their forces. Stop funding the hate says huge respect to byline times for standing firm in the face of threats and abuse. You can help by giving them a follow, sending them a positive message, and supporting their work. Together, we'll show that love is stronger than hate. And it's like, you know, hashtag stop spend, spend, uh, start spreading love. Hashtag stop funding hate. And so Byline, um, Byline Times have definitely got the support of stop funding hate, you know. And I'm hoping, you know, with GB News, there's this video that came out because, you know, Dan claiming that, you know, Byline Times is trying to take down GB News, you know, and, um, there is this video that was put out by um, Stop Funding Hate, uh, and it's just Dan Wooten and all you know his, his many guests. Literally, they're abusing Megan, and you know him and other reporters from GB News. Their whole thing was all the just horrible things that they, their guests, and other reporters have been saying about Megan. It is incredibly, and this is the same Dan Hutton who is sitting on TV claiming he's changed, sitting on there begging for money. And it just, it's because other people were trying to bully him. Meanwhile, he bullies everybody. 
And it's, it's unbelievable that this guy is still on TV. He's still, um, you know, he still has a job. And one of the people that he bullied and is this singer, dancer, uh, Alexandra, uh, Alexandra Burke. And so back in 20, two, uh, 2017, she was on, you know, whatever that dance, it called, uh, Strictly Come Dancing in the UK, and that's a dance show. And uh, Dan Wooten apparently, before all this, claimed that he was a fan of hers or whatever, and all of a sudden she's on the show and he starts abusing her. And, you know, and you can see some of the, the you know, his comments um, about her, tweeting about her. Again, this was back in 2017. So Strictly star Alexander Berg had a heated backstage bust up with Gorka Mar Marquez ahead of this weekend's dance off. That whole story has been, uh, and you know, you can see part of it um, on his article, Corka with Gorka. Strictly Come Dancing, Alexandra Burke had a heated bust up with dance partner Gorka ahead of uh, Dance Off. The former X Factor star 29, uh, star 29 was seen ranting at the professional dancer and barking orders at him in front of Strictly Come Dancing audience. And this whole thing, you know, even her partner was like, that's not true. <laughs> it was like totally not true. It was a total lie. And that was his article. So Alexandra, um, this was, you know, a little bit about that whole, you know, it wasn't just this article. It was just a pattern of writing all of these lies about her. And so Press Gazette picked up, um, picked up the story. And so this is a little bit about what they said um, was going on. It says, son, associate editor and writer of the bizarre show based column, Dan Wooten, has hit back at Strictly um, star Alexander Burke after she accused him of planting lies about her. In a message directed at Wooten on Twitter, Burke, who is currently performing with partner Gorka Marquez on the hit show, uh, the hit BBC uh, One said, Dan, every time we met, you have been lovely. I'm finding it hard to read all of these lies that you have published about me. I've tried my best to just be strong and brush it off, but mentally, it's taking its toll. It hurts so much to read yet another fake story when all I want to do is enjoy this journey on Strictly. Please spread love. Life is too short for all of this. Wooten tweets back, or at least, you know, memes back. On Sunday, Wooten tweeted, if only strictly judges would work it out, the British public simply don't want Alexandra Burke to win. Far too cocky, sad to see Davood go strictly, um, you know, hashtag strictly. Replying to Burke's message today, Wooten said, hi, Alex, hi, Alex. We worked closely together for many years, so you know what I... So you should know that I never write fake news, to which we all say, lies again. <laughs> this guy is such a liar, you know, and this whole thing was happening. And, you know, she also put out a video. Um, she also put out a video, I guess, much later talking about this time on Strictly when she was dancing. Her mom had also passed away. And she talked about on that video about, you know, when the day her mom passed away, her family, you know, encouraged her to go and do, you know, they, I guess they were doing press and all that stuff for the show. And she's like, okay, I can do it, but I just can't talk because she felt like if she talked, she would just start crying. So apparently she saw him at the red carpet, whatever, and she didn't say anything. And he basically called her a diva. And she was like, I, you know, and it, so he went on to write, start writing all of these negative articles, calling her difficult and all of these things and articles um, about her, claiming that all these stories about her were coming from backstage and he would never report stuff that was untrue and all of this stuff. Even when people like her partner were saying, this is false, Dan Wooten was still targeting her. And it's not just her. There were others like Lily Allen talked about the same thing, how Dan Wooten targeted her for like, I don't know, 10 years or something. And so she, and uh, you know, I guess next episode, I'll bring in about what she said about what Dan Wooten did to her. But he has a pattern of targeting women, you know, who have some celebrity 
or even more, um, you know, famous women. It's the same pattern, the same narcissistic pattern that P.S. Morgan have because they have no relevance in and of themselves. So they target women who have celebrity so that they can feel important. And this is what it is the same thing that his garbage twin, Piers Morgan did, does all the time in targeting. And of course we know that even up until a couple of days ago, Dan Wooten was still targeting Megan and Harry, especially Megan. And it's like, and it, you know, it just, it's, <laughs> This is the same, again, if you saw that, and I'm going to post that video, I'm going to post the link to that video in, in the show notes, and I'll also put it in the community page, you can watch it. It is so, and again, um, you know, Stop Funding Hate, put it together, because they put together Dan Wooten claiming, you know, that people are bullying him and all of that stuff in exchange, whatever, and then they cut to all the horrible things that he, his fellow GB news presenters and their guests have been saying about Megan and how the bullying and the abuse from him, the same man who wants people to now turn around and consider his mental health. It is so sickening what he has been doing. So, um, yeah, so I, it, it's good to see that people, again, this, this whole thing was in 2017, and we are in 2023 and Dan Wooten has not changed. And he's doing the same, it's probably most likely worse. Because, you know, as the people have all been saying, as we've seen, you know, Megan has been abused worse than anyone else that in the history, I guess, of the abuse. And it, it's unbelievable. And again, even more unbelievable that this guy is like on a nightly basis abused Megan, yet has the nerve gall and audacity to be claiming people are going after him and people are trying to cancel him and then asking people for money, really begging people for money, including sending it to, you know, a bunch of, you know, I guess, celebrities and stuff, including somebody who claimed that Dan catfished him. You know, it's just, <laughs> I'm telling you, shut up, are you all okay over there? <laughs> because, with, and with all of this stuff going on, and, and, and this is on Twitter, I mean, people have been going crazy. We've all been going crazy with this. Retweeting and tweeting and tweeting and tweeting about it. The British press is silent. Their mainstream press is silent. And again, we like to say, like, you know, it's a tabloid, it's a tabloid. Now, the so-called mainstream press are just as in on the, the protection racket as is the tabloids. The same with the royal family and the government. This is sick thing. You know, one of the people um, that's been supporting Dan Wooten is um, what is, you know, and she, actually she was even at one of the GB News um, guys had a party, birthday party, Nadine Dorries was there, you know, and it's just like all of these people, I mean, Dan Wooten has all his friends, you know, some of them who are on GB News and, you know, all tweeting out his plea that people support him and give him money. I'm telling you, the replies, I mean, I had to look at some of the replies because I'm like, what do people think about this? And the majority of people that I saw, they're like, uh-uh, we're supporting Byline Times. They're like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> but there are some people that has been supporting him. There are some people who have been donating to him, including one very, um, one guy who was, uh, he's in a wheelchair claiming that he gave Dan his entire check. And it's just like, you gave somebody who's, a, you know, reportedly a millionaire all the money you have to live on? And you were in a wheelchair? You know? <laughs> Unbelievable. But people buy into that sort of thing. And so, yeah, it just, you know, again, we all have to wait for until tomorrow before <laughs> we hear uh, Martin Branning unveiled. It would be interesting if they talk about, because I'd love to know, you know, what happened with Martin Branning and the royal family and how they came to leak Harry and Meghan's private information to Dan Mutu. As Harry said in spare, why him? Why the showbiz guy? And Harry said, you know, now he has this, you know, he's become this royal reporter based on his relationship with one, um, with um, the partner of one of their, one of their, you know, 
Prince, William, Prince William's uh, staff. And Harry even told William about it. And William's like, oh, I, you know, since best I'm going to look into it. I never did. My question is, who there was Martin Branning maybe blackmailing? So I hope we find out that out tomorrow. And all of these other nefarious things, you know, it, you know, it'd be good if um, some of their sources speak on the record. I hope so. You know, it just, <laughs> I'm telling you, tomorrow is a doozy. I'm telling you, know, it's so funny. I was thinking about it and I was like, you know what? I've never drank in my life other than when I was a kid. And, you know, I, I think I probably told you guys a story about, you know, when I was a kid that my family went to this party and then the, um, someone gave me red wine and the next thing I know I was in a car, don't know whose car, don't know I was, how I got there. And the next thing you know, I was home and I don't know how I got there and I don't know who else was in the car with me. But so that's one of the reasons I don't drink because just the idea that something could get you to the place where you have no control and you don't know and there's like you're, almost, you're blacked out. So I don't drink because of those things. I am too much of a control freak. But no, it's just like, I'm like, my goodness, I don't even drink. And today I was like, oh my goodness, maybe I need to take a sip. <laughs> because can I handle who Martin Brannig is? You know? For me, I'm also looking for if there's anything that, you know, that's connected in any way to Levi Davis's disappearance. Because I still believe that you know, the family, if I were the family, I'd start with the tabloid because, you know, especially when Levi was talking about the sexual blackmail, it, again, I don't have no idea or any connections. I don't have any evidence, but the similarities to what Martin Browning does and what happened to Levi is there. I can't unsee it, you know? So again, if, if, if those two things are related, I don't know, but would I be shocked if they are? No. No, I wouldn't. So hopefully somebody comes across. Some somebody comes out and and you know, I mean, I'm hoping fingers crossed. And also too for that family. If if somehow this is part of Levi, this was part of Levi Davis's world before he went missing. Again, I have no evidence, but again, I cannot unsee those evidence. Um, but yeah, it's just <laughs> tomorrow's gonna be a doozy. So um, at some point tomorrow after my class, I will, you know, hopefully do a podcast and Lord, it's going to be all about that. So anyways, uh, that's what's going on at Shutter Island. It is a mess. It's always a mess. I don't think that's changing anytime soon. But turning it, turning our attention to more positive things, Invictus Games, you know, and we talked about, you know, Invictus Games has a lot more things than just the, um, you know, the games. You know, this is one. Good luck to the 10 members of the We Are Invictus community who are taking part in the Invictus adventure to the great sand dunes of Colorado. Stay tuned for more amazing pictures like this. I had no idea there were sand dunes in Colorado. <laughs> I knew there were mountains in Colorado. I know, you know, I had no idea they had sand dunes. So thank you, Invictus Games, for teaching me something. That's my something new I learned today. And good luck to the uh, Invictus community members, the 10 members who are crossing that. It is amazing. I had no idea. This is Colorado. This is like, oh, something new I learned today. And also, this is really cool, um, you know, sad, but very cool, from Irena Rupstova. Uh, um, it says, an incredible statement from Irena Rupstova, who recently ran the London Marathon in, in memory of her deceased husband, a beautiful encapsulation of the Invictus spirit. And this is what Marina uh, Irena said. Um, Ire Irena says, um, she says, I was depressed and didn't want to do anything. And one day the Invictus Games Foundation reached out and said I could run the London Marathon in my husband's honor. I am happy that IGF, I am happy that IGF is in my life. You have helped me and you are my family. And so this is just, it's wonderful. It is absolutely wonderful to see how it's helped her, you know, I guess by running the marathon in her husband's honor. 
And it's so great that she has, you know, the Invictus game as a games and the Invictus community really as a family, you know. So yes, um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing if she will also be at um, in Dusseldorf. Um, so maybe, <laughs> you know, but it's just, again, you know, outside of the games, there's so much, there's so many things going on with Invictus and it's just really incredible to see how they give all of their um, members something that, you know, if it's, if it's gaming or if it's hiking or if it's whatever it is, you know, that they give that to their community so that, you know, whatever help they need, they can get it. So kudos to Irinia and also to her run, her marathon. So yeah. But anyway, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little over an hour. Um, I appreciate all of you so much. Again, I'm not going to be in the chat when this drops. But, um, you know, thank you in advance to Lydia, Church, Nelly, Karen, and Cookies and Cream and Black Queen, who are amazing, are amazing, amazing moderators and keep our chat safe from trolls. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and all uh, other things. Um, you know, so amazing. Thank you guys so very much. Um, I appreciate you. Uh, thank you to our Two Cents crew, Two Cents crew who support the, the, uh, the channel monthly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to our Gold Star supporters who support in the chat, you know, but getting donations, giving donations, getting super stickers, super chat, all of those things. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, because of your, you know, your donations that um, helps me to pay for the apps and stuff, you know, and the internet and all of that stuff that I need in order to do this podcast. So thank you all so much for your support. Um, that's it. Have a fantastic, fantastic day. And I will chat with you later. Again, I'm going to bring back my banner. Um, if you are new here and have not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. I click the notification bell so you know when we drop a video. Please like and share the video. You know, help us build our platform. And if you're able, join the Two Cents crew where you support the channel on a monthly basis. So thank you guys so much. All of you who have already supported the channel, I appreciate it. Please help us get to 10,000 by the end of summer. All right. So have a great day, everyone. And I shall talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>